Ford Car and Engine and Thresher Company took a very successful company, the Upton Company, and made it even a more successful company. They opened branches in Peoria, Illinois, Des Moines, Iowa, Lincoln, Nebraska, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Wichita, Kansas, Logansport, Indiana, and also had an office in uh, New York for foreign trade. The company not only expanded nationwide, but also in Port Huron. They would expand to have three plants in Port Huron. The first one, of course, is the one that we've been looking at on 24th Street in Bancroft. They called this plant number one. And this is where they built all the heavy machinery, like the traction engines and the threshers. Here's a picture out of the newspaper uh, of the Thrasher Company on 24th Street. And at first I didn't think it was a, a picture of the one on 24th Street because of the fact that there's an attachment of, of another building to it. And when we looked at the first picture of the plan, of the plans and blueprint uh, of the layout, it was just a block house by itself. And you can see that it, it was a, a, a block house by itself. There was the post office and the main offices. But then they added on to, I found out, uh, the sales offices. And uh, here's a better picture of what the whole thing looked like. At the, the original building on the left, the main offices and the post office. And on the right, those would be the new sales office that were added later. And of course, the signage on the roof. Plant number two was also on 24th Street, just further down near the intersection of Electric Avenue and Connor and 24th. This plant is where they made the corn shellers. And as we scroll down to the bottom here, we'll also see that they uh, had a branch in Sarnia, Ontario. They also made portable sawmills here called the Rusher. Both of these farm implements were uh, made to be pulled by the traction engines that were made at plant number one. Here's plant number two, which was further up on 24th near Electric and Connor Streets. Today, some of those buildings are still there. If you look at that, uh, well, there's only one building on 24th Street, that smaller one, and then the larger one behind it. That one's still there today. As we look down from the satellite map, uh, you can get an idea what that looks like. A new building has replaced the small building we saw in the previous picture on 24th Street. But the building behind that, the older building, uh, looks much the same, at least the southern end of it does. Plant number three was located at the corner of Moak and 28th Street. This was called the Malleable Iron Works. This was a forge where they did all their castings. We don't have a picture of plant number three, but we have something almost as good. Before uh, the threshing plant was there, the Havers Motor Car Company was there. And uh, of course they went out of business and the thresher took over, but uh, you have a picture of the Havers Car Company and what that looked like. And so it wouldn't look much different when Thresher took it over, it would be very similar. That would be Moak Street going off to the right and 28th Street going off to the left. Today the corner looks like this, and I believe that is the health department. The Port Huron Engine and Thresher Company describes the two pieces of machinery that they sold the most of, the engines and the threshers. And they did a great job of advertising. Here's one of their ads. What is the price? Quality is a bride you take upon yourself, for better or for worse. Price is a preacher that performs a ceremony. You don't have to live with a preacher. Port Huron quality means best values. Indisputable evidence of the popularity of Port Huron machines and the satisfactory service they give, both to the threshermen and farmers, is to be found in the fact that we have practically sold out our entire 1915 production, and we manufactured a greater number this season than we had in any one season in the past decade. They just didn't put a picture and a price in an ad. They wanted you to know about the quality of the merchandise. 
And they also used testimonials from people that had bought them. And here's one right here. This testimonial says this. Although I am right in the midst of threshing season, and I am busier than a dog full of fleas, yet I feel I must take time to write you about the 19 HP Longfellow high-pressure compound engine and the 33 by 54 inch rusher thresher purchased this year. And he goes on to talk about the, the quality and how satisfied he is with it. Notice he mentioned the Longfellow compound high-pressure engine. This was the latest in the Port Huron Engine and Thresher Company line. When they first made the change from Upton Manufacturing to Port Huron uh, Engine and Thresher Company, they used the Upton design for their uh, locomotive or uh, engine, traction engine, I guess they called them. And uh, this was the one that they were uh, selling. But then they came out with a new design that was so much better. The compound engine was a much better engine than the previous one. And they had a firebox that gave you another option for fuel. You had three choices instead of two. They used to use wood and coal, but in this one you could also use straw. This is a real good picture of the Longfellow. He had a choice any place between a 19 horse engine and a 32 horse engine. So for plowing it was great. The 19 horse engine was the most economical, but if you needed the extra power, you could go there as well. Speaking of plowing, this photograph here surprised me. It shows a plow behind the engine, just a one-man plow, and there he is standing up against it. And they did this to uh, move the streets out. Every spring they would have to go through and plow the streets and then they would come through with a, a grater and they would smooth it out. In the caption above, notice it says distinctive grouter pattern on driver wheels. Well, you notice they didn't have rubber tires in those days. They didn't have uh, tractor tires. What they had were these cast wheels. And that grouser, the grouser is actually like a tread on a tractor wheel today. That design there, that's called a grouser. And that was actually cast into the wheel. It made a very strong wheel. Probably one of the best wheels on the market for strength. But occasionally they did break. And when they did, you couldn't fix it. You had to buy a brand new wheel. And they were expensive. There have been many of these uh, traction engines that have survived uh, all 100 years uh, later. And uh, you'll see them going around to these agricultural uh, shows and so forth. And there's a few video clips on YouTube, and I pulled one of these off. And it shows the Longfellow uh, at Greenfield Village actually uh, doing plowing. You get to see two engines here, a railroad engine and a traction engine. That traction engine sure beats walking behind horses and plowing. At least on this one, they didn't need a man guiding it behind him. I'm not quite sure why that fellow's walking alongside. These traction engines sure made the farmer's life easier. But this type of plow would cut a much wider swath of land, and so it would uh, be much more efficient. It would get done much sooner in a large field. You can see this is a four-person operation, and the three in the back really didn't have much to do except when they were turning corners. See how they're putting those poles up now that they're on the straightaway? And then they'd release them when they go to the next curve and come back and do the same thing all over again. Here's a very short video clip that gives you pretty good idea what it looked like. But look at those front wheels. They're all over the place. 
don't know how they could play a plow a straight line with those. And there you see the extra few uh, storage in the back, the wood storage. These engines, much like a railroad locomotive, had whistles. But I don't think they used the whistles too much. Look at that cloud of steam. All right, we looked at the traction engine. Now let's look at the thresher. Just exactly what does a thresher do? A threshing machine is used to separate the grain from the straw and other light materials. As it is essentially a three-step process. In the first stage, bundles of grain and straw are pitched into the feeder. In the second stage, the separator, which is a rapidly rotating set of blades, and you can see these at the end of the feeder, first tore the bundles apart, breaking the twine and snapping the heads from the straw, then beat the straw and heads onto a groove plate, knocking the kernels from the heads without crushing them. The straw then passed over a straw rack that removed most of the straw from the kernels. Whatever passed through fell onto a series of progressively smaller shaking screens, removing most of the remaining straw and chaff from the kernels. The third stage was called the cleaner. Kernels that passed through the last screen were moved over a stream of air that blew the remaining straw and chaff away. The clean kernels then fell onto a hopper to be elevated to a measuring device before being dumped into sacks and conveyed to a granary. The straw and chaff were blown out onto the straw stack by a larger, stronger blower. And in this video, you'll get an idea what we're talking about. You can see them throwing the straw into the heater. And uh, as you look a little closer here, you can see all that excess, the, the straw going out to, into the dirt there, piling up. And then the uh, grain would actually go into that part of it. The small time farmers that grew just enough wheat for themselves certainly didn't have these big machines. They had what they call a treadle thresher. But it does help us to understand uh, what a threshing machine was like because it has basically the, the same thing going on here. Uh, you can see the shaking screens down below the fellows picking some of that chaff off and uh, you can see the grain going into that bucket and they're feeding the straw into the feeder just like a threshing machine only much smaller. The traction engines and threshing machines were the two big sellers, but they also sold a lot of these. These were portable sawmills, and uh, it was so important uh, in this area, especially since uh, timber was a big part of the Port Huron area. But not only this area, they shipped these all over the country. For the portable sawmill, you didn't have to bring the logs to the mill. You brought the mill to the logs. It was much easier hauling cut wood rather than logs through the woods. In this video you can see the traction engine and the belt connected to the portable sawmill and you can see the logs going through and first they stripped up the bark and then they would you know, cut up in whatever uh, size measurement boards they wanted. That chute that goes from the portable sawmill into that wagon is where all the sawdust went. This is a very nicely restored traction engine. Remember this photograph here with a man plowing the streets getting them ready for, for spring? Well, I told you they would be graded after that. And uh, of course, the Porter and Engine and Thresher Company sold those graders and 
Here's one here in this video I'll give you an idea what it looked like back then. Join me in my next video for part three of the Port Huron Engine and Thresher Company.